So this uh, video and the one following after are pretty much m me talking about head cannons for t for uh, werewolves and vampires. Yeah, my personal head cannon of how I write werewolves and vampires. So since I'm more of a werewolf fan than I am a vampire fan, let's get started with uh, you know my werewolf head cannon. Starting off now, werewolves are the thing about werewolves are that. The difficult thing is that there are, there isn't like a definitive werewolf, uh, le you know, one werewolf that everyone can see. Like dr obviously Dracula is the you know the alpha and omega vampire that everyone refer you know uh, uses the template. There is no real vampire you know werewolf to really go for. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have Larry Talbot in the original film, but even then, that's a stretch. I mean, that's the thing. Like we don't you don't really have a distinct character to follow through with. You know what I mean? That's uh, that's the thing with werewolves. Now, my th now my head canon with werewolves is that uh, werewolves' uh, mentality, their psy their psychological well-being depends on the phases of the moon. Where um, in my canon head canon is that werewolves can transform every night. They can transform every night and from that uh, their, you know, their human mind can stay intact. You know, their human mind, to an extent, can stay it can stay intact during the phases of the moon. Like, let's say the ma the moon uh, the moon is like quarter full or half full or something like that. If if that's the case, then they have a, their human mind has influence over their wild side. But their wild side, their wolf side, can get you know can get the better of them. Uh, if they get excited or angry, or um, they're just you know, let's say a serial killer becomes a werewolf, his mental his mentality isn't very strong. You know, so you know, if it's a, cr a crazy person becomes a werewolf, then they're usually the beast twenty four seven, and that's the thing. Like the, your mental power, dif in my head canon, mental power is what keeps the beast at bay unless it's a full moon and then the, your the wild side really the wolf side really get is on full control and that's why that's where the myth comes from that you can only turn into a werewolf by full moon because full moon you kind of get if you're running out in the wild you're probably going to get spotted in a by a po in a populated area so when it that's why you know when someone's a werewolf they usually they more than, they more than often in the head in my head canon Go off, hunt in the woods, hunt down prey, uh, or you know the wandering, you know the wandering traveler, or something along those extensions. So something of to that extent, I mean. So that's what you, uh, that's what I have for werewolf headcanon, unless it's you know full moon, and then the animal side is really out there, and it will go hunt down whatever it finds, be it human or animal. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about a new moon? You know, what happens during a new moon? Well, something special happens during a new moon. They don't transform. They don't turn at all. Uh, that's the one of the few nights when you know a hu you know when a you know human who's cur you know has the werewolf uh, curse or whatever you want to say it is can you know can go out and enjoy the nightlife. You know he you know he or she does not you, you know they do not transform. Similar to how like in. Uh, in <laughs> Inuyasha, when in, whenever a new moon happened, Inuyasha would be human. He would turn into a human. So, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the uh, among other things, it, is it still painful when humans transform into werewolves? Yeah, absolutely. So that's more or less that my head canon about the transformations. Let's talk about the body types of my head canon werewolves. The body types are usually like the ones you see here or in the Van Helsing movie, where you have the human upright form, but you have the wolf-like qualities. You have the uh, the wolf-like stature. You have the uh, the claws, the teeth, all of that. You have all of that, and you have the you know physical and you know physical you know the physical strength, speed, agility, all of your senses enhanced, and. That would, you know, that is uh, the that is the extent of the ability. You know, also, you know, a high tolerance for pain. There's another thing: high tolerance for pain. Now, the in terms of strength, uh, my my werewolves can, you know, my headcanon werewolves 
can usually bench press around uh, maybe a ton, a half a ton to a full ton. That's about ex the extent of their strength. It's not like they can pick up buildings or something. They could flip over a car, or maybe together they can flip. You know, they could flip over a few things, but. The strongest wolf, werewolves in my head canon can usually just li the max their strength maxes out at a full ton, and that's really it. Because I don't really like the idea of super strong werewolves. I really don't like you know the whole Hulk strength kind of werewolf kind of thing. Really don't like that, you know. But you have to have these animals, you know, these creatures stronger than the normal man. So I figured, you know, half ton to a ton that that sounds like a reasonable amount of. Uh, you know, strength, you know, for power output. The other thing, my werewolves don't talk. They do not talk. At all. And I have a reason for that. One, one, it's kind of a personal thing, because I feel like when werewolves talk, it's, it kind of takes me out, because I personally like the whole animal thing. And the other, you know, it's more of a personal thing, where I don't like the idea of werewolves uh, talking to one another. I really don't like in human, like using capable of human speech, the second reason is more of uh, why this is uh, why they don't they're not capable of speech is because when they transform their you know their vocal cords are stretched and torn. In fact, their whole body is you know their entire genetic code is being you know rewritten. It's being rewritten at a very fast pace, and their muscles stretch out, and you know the bones you know the bones increase in mass and size, uh, everything. So it really does hurt. <laughs> So, and during this transformation, the vocal cords become more hoarse, they become more stretched out, and a little more... like They de-evolve, almost, along with the rest of the body, hence why they're incapable of speech, but they're all capable of, like, uh, you know, snarling, growling, howling, other synonyms with an ing. <laughs> but yeah, that's the extent of... Uh, why they are capable of human intelligence, but they're not capable of speech. So you're probably wondering, well, how do they communicate? Glad you asked. It's kind of a mixture of, of a, obviously, let's get into hierarchy since, you know, the, the communication falls under that. Communication uh, for werewolves in my head canon is that there, you know, it kind of works like a regular wolf pack where you have the alpha male and female and you have the beta male. And you have the beta female and as well as, you know, the, the underlings under that. And the other thing is that my, al you know, alphas are not douchey. That's the thing, like, this needs to be an uns a, a new law for when werewolf movies happen. There needs to stop being douchey alphas. They're really, because in the animal kingdom, whether you be, you know, a jackal or wolf or, you know, what other, you know, canine that is a pack, an a pack animal, they're going to turn on you. They're going to turn on you if you're if a dickbag. And you're going to get kicked out of the pack, and you're going to be wounded alone and unable to hunt for yourself. You know, you may be able to hunt for yourself, but, you know, you're not going to last long out in the wild. So, <clears throat> most of the alpha, majority of the alpha characters I have in headcanon are more or less, they're stern, but they're fair. They have the, you know, they don't, they can, you know, they can rule fairly in their packs, but they know when to bring the hammer down when someone gets out of line or someone tries to, you know, step up to them. So, firm but, you know, a firm but fair grip on their packs. That's the kind, that's the, you know, way of the alphas work in, uh, the he in my headcanon. So let's get on to the communication along with, uh, so most of werewolves in my headcanon usually communicate to one another through body language, like, uh, again, through Animal Kingdom, most wolves, you know, can do, have like, uh, they don't need facial expressions or even growl, they can just, like, tense up their muscles or... Uh, bear their fangs, that shows, hey, I'm in charge, or get the fuck out of my way. Uh, you know, howls also prom uh, provide, you know, different sorts of howls provide different sorts of communication, like, hey, we're coming in, or hey, run, bad guys, or another pack showing up. Something like that. The other one is, and this one is something that I kind of, like, am half in, well, I'm half in, half out about, because, uh, this one, it's been used a few other times, but I figured, you know, why not? And that's telepathy. Now, we psychic werewolves. Not really that they can read people's mind. It's more like, we, because obviously I like, it, there's nothing really scientific about it. There's not a lot, of, I like to mix science and magic, actually. 
with, when it comes to werewolves and to an extent, you know, also to the extent of vampires as well in my head canon, where there's a bit of magic and science in both. This is the magic side. Not saying that werewolf, the werewolves in my head canon can actually read people's minds, but when they are, uh, when they transform, it opens up a mental communicate, you know, a mental link. It o- during the transformation of being a, um, during the transformation, a certain part of the person's mind opens up. Like it, it, there's a part, there's a part of that brain that triggers, and that trigger. Uh, can unlock uh, men, uh, you know mental telepathy, but only in the wolf form because when you're you know when during the transformation everything is increased tenfold uh, from hu- when you when you go from the human to beast mode. So that little part of the brain opens up, but it only stays open when uh, during the during the during the uh, person's wolf form. So. And it only can link, it can't really link up to like hum, what humans are thinking, but only people within the pack or other werewolves. So they can only mentally communicate between themselves. However, this ability is lost when, of course, the full moon is out, and that's when the human mind is kind of out there. So that would be the that's the that's the only drawback is when the hum, you know obviously like I said earlier the when the Full moon is out. That's when the the animal side really takes over. But like I said, as long as the different phases of the moon, the the person who is a werewolf can have that mental link between all the other werewolves in his his or her pack and have that kind of communication, even with other werewolves in this pack. But it only links to other uh, to others of their own kind. So that's the only way it can work. In terms of other stuff. Uh, within my head canon of werewolves is that uh, there are different species of werewolves. There's different, you know, throughout the world there are different types of werewolves throughout the world. There isn't just that one species. It's kind of similar to how we have different species of wolves and dogs and different canines. There are different wolves throughout the, you know, different species of light of werewolves throughout uh, the world. Where you have like, uh, you know, the Sco- my, the version of I have for the Scottish pack are these very big, very muscular very, you know, heavy coated because it's cold in Scotland. They're very, uh, they're very bulky because they hunt down very large prey, obviously cattle and, you know, a few other things, but, and you also have the Russian breed, which are also very large. They're, uh, they're very tall, very bulky, even bulkier than the Scottish breed because obviously they're hunting down bears and tight, you know, even Siberian tigers, uh, and they're more they're more aggressive they're more of aggressive types and you've even got like the Ger- the german breed are a little more smaller they're slimmer they're they are uh, but they're uh, they're very muscular they're very stout they're very stout uh species and you've got like the uh what was another what's another good example Mo- most of them are european breeds there's mostly european breeds of werewolves kind of, again similar to how there's different breeds of dogs and other creatures out there. And then you have, like, then there's also, just like in dog breeds, there's also, like, mixed breeds. There's mixed breeds of wolves that have kind of flourished out the world. Like, you have uh, the North Amer- the uh, American breed, which are kind of like the type you see right here, where they they kind of, like, uh, where werewolves long ago, in my headcanon, came to America during the 13 colonies and kind of interbred with skinwalkers. Who in this head canon aren't really werewolves? They're more like they're kind of like the cousin to where skinwalkers are like cousins to werewolves. Where it's kind of like how wolves and jackals are related, but a few other genetic traits. So that is so you know you have the European breed of werewolves come in. They breed with skinwalkers, and thus there's the American you know the American breed werewolf, which are they can't really transform to anything else. They're just werewolves, but they're more. They, they're more durable. They're actually a lot more durable and can take a lot more damage than other wolves can, and their senses are a little more heightened than others. But they're a little small. They're a little smaller than, like, say, the Russian or Scottish breed, and they're they're but they're actually more of a powerhouse. They're 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 incredibly durable and have enhanced stamina than other wolves do. So, there you go. Oh yeah. Also, and we have the South American Lobo Zone, which are not—they're re- not—they're not really crossbreeds. They're—they're kind of—they're uh, they're uh, again from you know Central American, South American lore of you know the, they're more 
the Lobozones in my head canon are more slimmer. They're actually smaller. They're almost like uh, they're they more run on more on four legs, and they're not really a, they're they're more they're more vicious. They're they're more inclined to attack people than the other breeds. So let's move on to the I guess you could say the last thing in I guess thing the last thing I want to mention in here are the the weaknesses. Now, the main weakness is, of course, silver, and again, I'd like to mix a bit of magic and science with the, uh, re you know, with these cr with these creatures, be it, albeit werewolves or vampires. In my head canon for why silver is a weakness to most werewolves, because it's not, it doesn't affect all, that's the thing. There's not real, you know, silver, you can wound a cre you know, one of these werewolves with silver, but there may be another way to kill them. You know, regular bullets could kill them, or... Uh, tank fire, they could, you can blow them up. There, it doesn't have to be just a silver bullet with most. And the reason why silver works so well against werewolves is because it, it there's a uh, the silver the silver alloy creates kind of like a blood clot a blood clotting system throughout the you know once the silver hits the bone or whatever organ the silver starts to break apart and enter the bloodstream and creates like a blood clot and tissue damage happens. It's kind of like being shot with a po you know with a poison arrow to most of them because the it has such a bad re the silver has such a bad reaction to them causing the, their body to like rapidly it doesn't instantly kill them. It's almost like having you know having a quick you know a very quick and painful cancer. They could take days to days or even weeks to kill one of these things uh, depending on where they got shot and the you know the the person who was a werewolf is going to take a while to die. Now they can survive from it. Uh, like if they got shot in the arm or leg, it's just going to have it's going to hurt like a bitch for a while. But if they got shot in like the the back or the chest or even obviously head means dead <laughs> for most of them. But if they got shot somewhere like the torso or chest, that's that's unless they can get immediate attention from you know someone else of their kind or you know somewhere else. You know if they if they can't get that bullet out soon enough, they will die. You know be it hours or days or even weeks, but it's it will be a very painful death. So, with all that said, that is pretty much my uh, werewolf... That is at least most of my werewolf headcanon. So, yeah, you guys tell me, what is your werewolf headcanon? And stay tuned, because the next vi uh, vid is going to be me talking about my vampire headcanon. So, be sure to check that out. Uh, to check that out. But anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'm out.